The world groans under the weight and strain of pollution, overpopulation, and the depletion of natural resources. Earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, floods and tornadoes ravage the globe each year with primordial fury. In the U.S., these kinds of disasters have increased in frequency and catastrophic impact, costing nearly a trillion dollars in damage and economic losses over the last 15 years. In the aftermath of our turbulent world of destruction, there is a predominant group of people who are compelled to respond compassionately to the tragic loss of life and homes in their communities. They are the church. children were like in this little one room and they were all sitting laying down on the bed and they couldn't go anywhere. But who is the church and what are the expectations of the churches that exist within disaster areas? Explore with Cody Terry in a search to understand why the church and parachurch organizations are so compelled to tirelessly serve disaster victims. How some churches are thrust into providing disaster relief and how churches are best suited to mobilize that relief in the U.S. and around the world. But what do they risk? What do they gain? And what happens when need turns to greed? Will they survive the storm? It seems some organizations are overcomplicating things by being too calculating. See how three organizations work in the field of disaster response. Find out why there is little more than two to three weeks to raise recovery funds before the media and nonprofits leave. Because when they leave, so does the money. When Jesus wanted to feed the 5,000, his disciples, they wanted to send them away because they too calculated that there were too many and they didn't have enough. But Jesus said, bring them to me and he took what was there and he multiplied it. 